Hi guys, I'm Booster of the Two Man, and today I've got a video for you. Now, this is for MB Beats. I'm really sorry about not uploading this earlier. Just lots of things have been going on with my life. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, this is a video on uh, World 2 German gas equipment. It's going to be, and also uh, World 2 German tornasters and how to pack them. So there'll be two parts to the video. Uh, one part will be the gas. Uh, gas equipment and the other part will be on the tornister. So without further ado, let's get started with gas equipment. So here I have three German gas mask canisters. Um, this is an early war one, this is a mid war one, this is an extremely late war one. But there's basically no difference. Um, in 1938 the German army adopted the M38 gas mask and they started off with a um, simplified version of this canister the case for it so you can see it was short opening mechanism like this it had more of a, um, a different type of mechanism to open it with so then 1939 they moved on to this type here which they used throughout the war this one is missing this part here um, which you'd use to help to open it but I just got it it will be attached by straps to a cross strap and a hook to the equipment. I'll show you how that is attached in a minute. And you will also be issued with this, which is a holder for what was known as gas plane or gas cape. These were basically for in case the there was a gas attack, you would rip this open after you've got your mask on, and then you would throw your pull out your gas cape, um, which is basically big rubberized sheet, it's got some special chemicals in, I'm not quite sure of the name, but you throw that over yourself and then you lie on the ground, obviously you wouldn't do that if you're in combat, but if you had the chance to you'd do that, and then that would protect you and your equipment and kit from being uh, got by any nasty chemicals and stuff like that. They had several different types of gas cape holders, which are these, so this is, these two are kind of early war ones. Um, and then this is a late war one from 1943 onwards. So the first two were a rubberized cotton material. So if you have a look here. Um, these two are different because if you have a look at this one, it opens up like this, then inside there's that, and you can see that it's got the poppers, and then on the back there's the parts that you'd use to attach it to a strap. Here is the second one. This is different because you can tell here that it's been sewn differently here and also the stitching on the back is a little bit different or quite different to this one here. Again they, they all got pretty similar insides. Then in 1942-43 they introduced this type which uh, basically was more economic than these two. It is a non rubberized variant. It's just made of cloth and it's got similar sort of attachments on the back. And again, the inside is the same. I'll show you the inside of the gas mask tins now. So that's how you open the gas mask tin. So pull down on that. Normally, if it had, it still has this strap, you pull that up. This one was a bit warped when I bought it so it doesn't usually open as easily. Inside you have this piece here which is for spare eyepieces for your gas mask. This one is uh, the inside part is broken and here is the spare eye eyepieces. There would be originally a little spring which you'd come to rest down there. This one is missing it so I have got this one here which has it inside. After the war, uh, and in the late war rather, that spring was changed. This is a 1945 dated gas mask, and just to save crap around with the spring, they just added a piece of metal that you just weld in place to hold the eye shields, or the spare eye pieces rather. Um, for the gas mask. You would have your date on the on this piece here. You might also have a date on the 
this this part here as well. This part here usually got replaced though because it could quite often break. Um, this one has got a 1940 date there. It says 1940 there. Probably not going to catch it, so I'll probably put a picture in of that. And then there is a an ink stamp um, of the Raffinamp, which is basically the Army Acceptance Code. Or Army Ordnance Acceptance Code accepting this into almost all the German equipment that was used during the war had Waffen amps on. Some of them didn't, like helmets, and others just didn't due to late war and need a kit needing to get to the front and then they're not wanting to mess around with getting the stamps. Inside here, there is this is a filter for it. This is a post war filter, but it's almost the same as the wartime one. And the gas mask. I've not got these attached, and this gas mask has got a bit of rust on just because there's rust inside this one. The gas mask is again a post war one, but it's the same, exactly the same as the wartime one. I don't have a wartime one, and then it screw on like so. You don't screw that part. I'm not going to do it because it's probably got asbestos in. And you screw it on there, and then you breathe. And you also have to remove that part as well for. They would all, well most of the German gas masks, had that D on the bottom which stands for Dunker or Sealed. And that means it's totally airtight and watertight. So if I was to say have to make a river crossing, I could cross a river and my gas mask filter would not get ruined. Which is one of the vastly superior things that the German gas masks had over the Allied ones. Because the Allied ones were all... All of them were in bags basically so they could apart from there was uh, in the early war the, uh, the Poles the Belgians and the French had a similar sort of gas mask the canister design to this and pot I think Czechs might have as well however they don't really count because really they got defeated within a matter of months so that is those um, and I shall get on to talking about how the gas cape holders will be attached. I forgot to mention that I don't have a gas cape at the moment. I'm probably going to get one soon, probably next month actually, just because gas capes are usually quite hard to find, quite expensive, and even reproduction ones. So without further ado, let's get on to showing how the gas mask will be worn throughout really the time. So before you put the case on, you need to attach the straps. So first off, I'll start with this, the hook part, which is the easiest part. Just take the bottom loop, single loop, slot it through here. It'll be the same on reproduction as on originals. However, I wouldn't buy a reproduction because it's a waste of money, seeing as how easily available original ones are. You can get them in semi-relic condition for like uh, 20 quid, something like that. Uh, I think I paid about £40 for this, but that's the most I've ever paid. So that's that part put on, it's pretty simple, you just insert the stud through there, then the next part you will take this long piece. So the way how I do it is get the end without the buckle and the two and the end with which is the end with the two slits in. You see there's the little seam part. Now as you're looking down on top you'll see the two upper loops and you want to choose the left hand one so you put this through like so and then and you're going to want to make sure this the um, seam is like that when you thread it through so you get to get you'll then get down to the end and make sure that it's all straight that you haven't got it twisted and then take the end, thread it through here, like so, thread it through, and then thread it through like this. So there you go, there you have one part of it, then you turn it over. Make sure the strap is still straight. Then 
thread this end through here take your stud make sure that you have flat, the big flat bottom part of the stud closest to the tin put it through the that hole there and this hole here like that and you have strapped up your gas mask canister ready for wear here I have my early war set up for uh, riflemen and infantrymen standard kitchen or private so or enlisted man so you take your, your strap the long strap and you put it through the arm the right arm goes through the sleeve you put your head like that and left there so over on the left shoulder and also um, make sure the buckle is facing outwards so you can see the buckle there and then turn it around if you're on if you're doing this in real life on a person you will almost certainly need someone else to help you with this because it's very difficult without so we'll take this end here so you take this the strap and you, you'll see the bread bag here the bread bag has got two straps and a hook you want to put this in between the hook and the left hand one as you look at it So you can put it on like that. So after you've got it on like that, you're going to have to move it around to the front. Or you could call it the side. So we'll take the strap here, the buckle rather, and we'll just move it up until it feels comfortable, is at a comfortable place for you. Now you really want it to be so gas mask canister is either like that or possibly like that you want it to be sitting on the on the top of the bread bag um, possibly either on top of or next to the water bottle canteen. The canteen so that is how it is worn it's worn universally throughout the war you get occasions where men wouldn't wear the belts with them. However, nine times out of ten, they would always wear this with a belt. Let's now get down to how they would wear the in the gas cake bag. So we'll start off with an early war gas cake bag. So there are several ways this was worn during the early stages of the war. Sometimes they wouldn't wear them at all. However. In the early part of the war, they usually wear it like this, across the chest like that. So, to do that, you need to attach it. And the way how you do that is, never ever do it like this. I'm just doing this because it's on the mannequin. You see the long strap. So you undo the long strap. Now. I'm just doing this on the mannequin, but you should never do it on the mannequin because it's just asking for trouble. Um, yeah, take it off when you're doing this. So, make sure you keep the strap straight. And you'll take your gas cape holder and you will turn it upside down. Make sure that the outside is facing out. And you see these little loops in the back? You will push the strap through those and then once it's there you will reattach the strap to the canister so again doesn't really matter which way just as long as it's on or canister strap So yeah, you will move this around over the shoulder and onto the chest like so, and you wear it there, across the chest. That's how it was designed to be worn. However, troops would often find that 
that was quite um, it was harder to get the gas capes out of the bag uh, that way and if you're in a chemical or gas situation you do not want to be faffing around trying to pull out the gas cape you want it on top of you to protect you so they basically decided to flip it upside down so you will instead of putting it up attaching it like that you attach it the other way so instead of attaching it like that attach it like so so exactly the same way thread it through the loops attach this part here so it now looks like it's the right way up when it's on the back however when you put it on properly you turn turn the mannequin around you see it's upside down now it's not a hundred percent correct it was it was done you can find the odd picture however mostly you want to do it the first way that I showed you however this did allow for quicker access to your gas cape because you pull it out and it's also going to have gravity working on your side rather than against you when you're pulling it out so then you get it on quickly rather than having to pull it up like that and just pull it down it's a lot easier that is that way of wearing it and i'll quickly show you the other early wall one um, just in wear so here is the other early wall one in wear just thought I'd show it to you like that. Now, um, during the early part of the war, they found out that this would often get in the way, and they knew that no one was going to use gas, or at least the soldiers knew that um, they were never ever going to use gas because, well, the Allies wouldn't use gas against them because they knew that the Germans would just use gas back against the Allies. So, quite often, to keep these, just in case there was a gas attack, and also just to stay in following regulations they would attach them to the canisters themselves that would get it out of the way of the chest area this was partly because if you're an NCO or an officer you would have a pair of field glasses here or attach your belt and if you've got this bloody thing on your chest it's getting in the way um, however the plus about this is it does cover up metal ribbons that you're wearing on your button it does help camouflage that however it does sacrifice movement and gets in the way and if you're on the ground that is going to be pushing into you and it's not going to be very comfortable um, but however when you attach it to the gas mask canister it is a lot easier to wear I'll cut to that showing you how to do that now so what you'll need for this is you'll need your canister your gas cape holder and also two German equipment straps. Um, this is a bit of a naff one because it's been on my gas mask canister for a long time. Um, so what you do is you'll get the gas cape holder, place it on the canister like this, and then take one of the straps. It doesn't really matter which way, I would personally probably put it this way. So you see this little groove at the bottom here in the canister. So place the strap basically in that groove. Now pull it up to however tight you think you're going to need it. And then just put, attach the buckle like so. Try and keep it in that line. And then do it up as tight as it'll go. Then thread through like so and then put in like fold it back on itself into the little loop here just so that it gets the excess uh, strap out of the way then you'll take the other strap and make sure you've got it placed on the same way as the first strap lift it up put it underneath the canister 
make sure you wrap it around underneath these two little flaps so you're in like this so see there that is probably the one of the best places to put it do it up again in a similar sort of fashion as tight as you can get it you don't want the thing falling off that'd be really really annoying and not wanted so fold it up like that and that is your early war canister strap on also you want to make sure that you don't do what I've just done which is catch your canister opening device um, on that and also if you do find that you've placed it too close to the opening device for the canister just move it around and then just you might need to adjust the straps a little bit to make them a bit tighter like I'm gonna have to do with this bottom strap once they are on it's pretty much all done you probably gonna want to move them around just so that they look nice and even and then you have your mask canister all set up this was really started doing in probably about 1940 then in 1941 the Germans found out that in Russia, because of the Russian winter in 1941, that this would make the gas planer break, or start to crack rather, because of the special material impregnated the, the gas cape. So, they said, you can't do this, um, you have to wear it the regulation way. However, quite a lot of German units back then just said, screw the order, and no one cared, and they just continued to wear it like this throughout the war i'll show you what they also used to do quite often they would leave their gas masks in stores or storage and they would actually use their gas mask canisters for other things such as and this one i've got a torch and some spare ammunition comb Jackknife, this is an Italian one. Um, document on um, M24 Stilham Granata. And I usually do a Western Front, some Lucky Strike cigarettes I've snatched off a dead Allied soldier or an Allied supply dump drop. And quite often that, that's how the gas mask canisters would get used, just because soldiers knew it was. There, there wasn't going to be gas used during the war. I shall get on to the late war one now. You really don't wear this gas cape holder with this gas mask canister because it's, it's a, a mid war 1943 variant at what production, production model. It's quite hard to tell, but up here underneath the paint, there is. A little triangle with 43 underneath it there so yeah I, I usually wear with that this gas cape bag and I, I always wear it like this just because it's better um, this has been repainted and um, also this one you can see the original green paint underneath I've got this other paint on top actually I'll show you this one you can wear as well just thought I'd do this because I've got the kit and I've got the time. So this is sort of a mid-war to late war uniform. So this is an M42 uniform. They used these from 1942 onwards. If you, look at, if, you look at, if you look at the back, my straps. So anyway, that's really the only differences about the webbing, the gas mask, and the gas mask canister. And then you can see here it's got the late war gas cape holder attached to it so that is that so yeah this this was also um, quite common throughout the last stages of the war so this is sort of an extreme late war sort of uniform so this is an m44-45 really it's an m45 uniform it was designed in 1944 and it was issued to some units for field trials 
such as Panzer Lehr Division and then in 1945 was more widely issued and used. It was sort of very bare bones. They cut the field tunic short. Here is the gas mask coaster. I had it at the beginning of the morning, 1945 again. I cut the strap on wrong to this gas mask coaster. So, hell. so yeah, it's got the late war gas cape bag attached like that. Just so, in case you want to see, you can see the date. You probably won't be able to, but it is here. And it's 1945. There's a triangle, and underneath it, there's 45. It's quite hard to read, but I'll probably include a photograph of that just to make it easier for you. But yeah, um, another thing that you can tell it's a late war 1945 or 44 produced Bombers because of that part there that was um, introduced to the eye shield. So, yeah, another interesting thing about this is it is not in the standard sort of field grey, it's more in an apple green um, colour rather than field grey colour which is more of this sort of colour if you have a look at the difference you should be able to see the difference in the colour it's way more lighter this colour was mainly used on vehicles however as the war progressed I assume they would just use whatever paint they had and they probably just painted this it was used by the East Germans as well after the war so I'm not sure if the council might have been um, appropriated by the East Germans now I just thought about adding this just for a little bit of fun really so I have been planning on doing 101st Jäger Division in Prussian for 1945 and this is called Leibniz Camouflage and I just thought I'd show it to you and see what you guys think uh, so yeah in 1944 to 45 the Germans had been planning on creating a new camouflage that would be universal for all of the armed services, so the Wehrmacht, Luftwaffe, and the Waffen SS as well. So in February 1945, uh, they finalised the design and it started to be produced at two places. One of them was the concentration camp at Dachau, and I can't remember where the other one was. They issued them sparingly because they really didn't, the logistics system in 1945 didn't really allow it. They did get some into Italy, um, northern Italy, and they had some. Uh, quite a lot of them were with the 101st Jaeger Division um, when they surrendered in Czechoslovakia or southern Germany. So I just thought I'd add that on there. So it was also designed to, um, I believe, be worn over the top of uh, your original field blouse under, with underneath uh, as a camouflage. Um, and then it did come with a pair of trousers as well, such as these here. Which are basically the same as M43s apart from uh, the belt um, it's a fixed loop it's not like one of these with a button it's a fixed one for the belt so again I've got the belt attached to these because they're a little bit too big for me a little bit too big for me at the moment so yep and they also the whole idea of the design was to uh, really um, defy uh, infrared uh, sensors because the Germans had developed their own uh, infrared night sights, like the Vampir, uh, which they used with the SDG-44. Realised that the Allies were probably doing exactly the same thing, and they also worried about ca captured German Vampirs being used by the Allies against them. They originally decided to make the tunics, um, which were basically standard M45 tunic, apart from it had a drawstring at the bottom. It was missing the hook and eye at the top. My M45 tunic underneath was missing the hook and eye at the top as well. And they also made M43 field caps. Not, uh, as far as I know, not many, if any, of these have ever survived. And the same with the tunics. They also produced panzer wraps. I've seen one panzer wrap, um, which I think was on an auction site, uh, something like that. And they also produced helmet covers. Turn it. Up the right way and you have your helmet cover and the helmet cover um, has loops for foliage as well foliage loops um, so yeah so that's the helmet that, that kind of go with this impression I quite like this some people say it's inaccurate but yeah 
it, it is accurate if you're doing the right unit. Um, and I suppose there's some excuse that the German records at the end of the war were kind of all messed up. German ministry were all messed up, so excuse that there there might have been some on. Just thought I'd add that on the end, um, just because it's a bit of fun. I like to kind of create a have a nineteen forty five impression just because it just interests me. Kind of like the last ditch sort of defence. Um, of Germany at the end of the war. I think it would be quite interesting to have a reenactment of that sort of last ditch defence of the of Germany at the end of the war. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, this will be the end of part one. Part two will be coming out after this soon. Hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, subscribe. Bye.